I grew up on Speed Racer. And I those were, Racer. you remember Speed Racer? Here he and comes. Here comes, comes Speed Racer. Racer. He's, he's a, a demon on wheels. wheels. <laughs> He's barreling down the travel like he's ever, ever going to come back. Okay. This is uh, real, right? I haven't dreamt this, that you two are similar <laughs> to each other. This show is all about uh, the tweets that you have put out yeah. on Twitter yeah. about NASCAR. That was a few years ago. Yeah. If you dug these tweets out, they would have been from 2014. All right. Mm -hmm. right? During the run the weekly airings of Cosmos on oh, Sunday night right. in prime time on Fox. Fox. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. Right. All right, then we learned that of the 13 week run, one of those nights was gonna get bumped No. for NASCAR. Uh -huh. And I said, what? You gonna put NASCAR in for Cosmos, excuse me? So, so I said, all right, I am going to fight fire with fire, okay? And I said, for all those who wanted to see Cosmos, but now are watching NASCAR, I'm going to tweet the physics of NASCAR. Oh. And this way, I, I'm respecting right. that it's Memorial Day weekend. You got to do the NASCAR thing. Right. It's Sunday night, family, everybody's home. NASCAR is a huge following. Yes. But I'm going to be pumping this stuff with some physics. And that's what I did. I don't know why they just didn't have you on Cosmos, but put a bunch of like branding stickers all <laughs> over you. And just let you do Cosmos, like Pennzoil here, <laughs> just, and, you know, and Let it run here. around the track. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in overalls with a whole load of branding. That, that would be a, the collision of NASCAR and the astrophysics. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. All right, so uh, if we can bring up our first tweet, we'll see uh, what it says. And Fabulous. There we rubber go. tires on asphalt grant a maximum speed of about 165 miles per hour in the 24 degree bank turns at Charlotte Motor Speedway. If you go faster than that, you're not going to stay connected to the to the road and you hit the embankment. That's, uh, that's so that's, dri that's driver intelligence, that's driver knowledge of each particular track in a particular Well, they would have to know, Charlotte. I presume they would yeah. know, someone would tell them this. Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah. There's yeah. a whole yes. team of analytics. Like the guy who did 175 miles per hour. I'm sure he told them maximum speed is 165. <laughs> Because as, right, yeah, yeah. because as his car was flung off the bank and out right. of the arena. Now, of course, you, yeah. uh, you can do 100, 200, 190, 180 going into it. Right. Because you're slowing down. At that point, you just don't want that to happen. And who was it? Was it Mario Andretti who said, mm -hmm. uh, if you're in complete control of your car, you're not in the race? Wow. So, so, you, you, so, you, so I've heard that. It's like, so, yeah. so they I might feel, be trying 166, 166. Uh -huh. You 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 you're testing those limits of physics. Right. Otherwise, you're not you're not in the race. You don't want to do it safe. They I have feel to drive about on the my edge. Children. They have to drive on in the, the red zone all the time. All the time. Yeah, yeah. In order to do that calculation, you have to know the exactly. the angle of the bank. Right. And it turns out, within some tracks, the banks are not the same. Mm -hmm. oh. The bank angle is not the same on different turns, and it's not the same from track to track. At Charlotte Motor Speedway, the angle of the track is 24 degrees. How so, do I use that? So as a, as a race driver, yeah, yeah. how am I going to use that banking to my advantage over my opponent? So Gary, let's think about the 24 degrees, but let's, okay. start, at zero, let's start at zero degrees. So, so here's a track that has no bank at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can imagine that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no bank. Just an oval. If there was no friction between your tires and the road, and you try to go into a turn, you just keep going straight. Mm -hmm. You're not going to turn. All right. Because you're not, you're not connected to the road. So you're in a straight line, and you will continue in a straight line unless acted on by an outside force, one of Newton's laws of motion. Right. If you bank the track, what will happen is the track now turns you. Right. Okay? The track can actually engage a turn even with no coefficient of friction at all. Mm-hmm. Okay? Ooh. So now put in friction, mm -hmm. and now you've got grip, You've got to, so you can just take that turn. Just, right. just, just, just feel that turn. And, and you know it and you feel it. So there is one speed, one speed that will maximize how fast you can go depending on the friction between your tires and the road and the angle and, sorry, the radius of curvature. Because mm -hmm. right. if it's banked, but it's like really, really long, right. that's, that's, that's not a thing. So it's, it's, if it's, so you have to measure the radius of curvature. That's why I had to specify the bank turns 
at Charlotte Motor Speedway. That, so there's one speed and it's 165 miles an hour. At a coefficient of friction of one, generally asphalt and rubber comes in about a, a coefficient of friction of one. Okay, that's really good. Okay. That's why tires work very well on roads. That's why. It's not an accident. So here's what you, you have to ask the question. What is the fastest you can accelerate from zero to 60? Yeah. It is not infinite. It's just not, okay? And it depends on your coefficient of friction. At a coefficient of friction of one, the fastest you can accelerate is the acceleration of gravity itself. Ooh, which really? Is fixed, which is fixed, exactly. That is the fastest you can accelerate. Wow. And so, in other words, if you drop a ball, mm -hmm. you look at how quickly it gains speed, and then you have a car with a really powerful engine that wants to accelerate fast about it goes this way, so they'll like go exactly the same speed. Okay? This is an interesting fact yeah. about mm -hmm. coefficients of friction yeah. and, and acceleration. You can accelerate faster if it has a, a rocket coming out the back. Right. But well, then it's the, the, the ground is irrelevant. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Yeah. It's just pushing it regardless. You've taken away the element of You take away the, the, the tire yeah. road no, It's just being pushed. It's not accelerating right, from so the exactly. tire. Exactly. So, or, yeah. or if it is on, a, on a, a, a track where you have intersecting teeth mm -hmm. on a gear, mm -hmm. yep. then you can just rotate that as fast as you want. Which is what they do on an aircraft carrier. Aircraft carrier, yes, right. yes. Yeah. You can do all kinds of stuff on an aircraft carrier yeah. to get planes to take off faster or slow down faster. Okay, yeah. so I did that calculation for Charlotte Motor Speedway. It was 165 miles an hour. Then you watch them in the race. There they are hitting above 200 in the straightaways. Then they go to the turn, and at the peak turn, they're 165 miles an hour every time. Yeah. All right, Chuck, let's yeah. get to another tweet. We're going to stick with the Charlotte Motor Charlotte Speedway. Charlotte Motor Speedway, which yeah. uh, clearly you were watching this when you were tweeting. Yep. But the Charlotte Motor Speedway increased their banking angle from 24 degrees to 31 degrees. The Earth as we know it would stop its rotation. No, <laughs> that no, that didn't that say that. <laughs> I did, didn't say that. Okay. It didn't say that. It says uh, if they increased their banking <laughs> angle from 24 to 31 degrees, the cars could do the turn at 200 miles per hour. Right. So this must be what you were talking about. The bank is turning the car itself. Exactly. So the deeper the bank, the higher the speed can be because you're getting the force that's pressing the There's car against the back. more of a the force to, 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 to enable that turn. Right. It's not just the sliding of tires against roads sideways that's trying to prevent you from sliding, mm -hmm. okay? That would then enable the turn. It's the, the bank is, uh, is empowering your car to go at a higher speed in order to make that turn. See, that would be interesting from a racing point of view because it means I could hit the straightaway at 200 and not lose energy through braking coming into the bend. Not only that, not only that, if you drive at the exact speed that the bank was calculated for, mm -hmm. you never have to turn your steering wheel. Because the car so thinks it's going, it, car thinks it's going straight. The car thinks it's going in a straight line. Yeah. The car does not. So you just, you just surf it. Right. But so what's interesting to me is, if you know this about the turns, the only steering you're doing is to maneuver in front and behind cars to position yourself. Right. So there's a whole other jockeying of what's going on among the cars, and it's not I got to turn left. And that was the joke in Charlotte, the town. All right. They say in Charlotte, only people only know how to turn left. Okay. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> That's the joke. Right. Because all the tracks go clockwise or uh, counterclockwise yeah. around. And I'm saying if they're hitting the, the turns at the exact speed, they're not even turning the wheel to do that. How brave is the driver that goes into the turn and goes, Nah, I'll let the car take <laughs> some of this. Oh, <laughs> not a chance. So, how much of a change in angle on the banking could we get away with? And what sort of speeds could we play well, with? Well, I, 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 my general question would be, uh, you want more action, you want more speeds, why not just increase the angle? Right. Um, the, here's the problem. If you're not doing 200 miles an hour, yep. the car is going to want to slide down. down. Yeah, right. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't have yeah. enough force pinning it against the, yeah. the bank. So if something goes down going into the turn and you don't keep up that speed, um, you're, yeah, the car is not stable. Is it possible? to get to a speed where you not only can go up, but total Hot Wheels corkscrew. <laughs> now I ask myself, okay? It's 
like you go into the turn, <laughs> you're up on the bank, and then all of a sudden, corkscrew through, yeah. and you come out the other side. Yeah, the answer is yes. So, oh, really? Yeah, in fact, they do it in, in amusement parks. So in other words, let me restate your comment. If you travel fast enough, then you can, so now you're, you're going up. All right, because if you go a corkscrew, you have to go up. Right. So if you're traveling fast enough, you can give yourself enough, enough upward momentum so that your car continues to press against a surface that is pointing downwards. Right. Okay? And then you come down off of that and do it another time. Yeah, in principle, you can design a racetrack where cars do corkscrews. But, but you have to be careful because you don't want the car to, like, stall before you go into it. Yes. Up, up, then you fall out. And oh, you... that's amazing. No. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. You're making me such a NASCAR fan right now. <laughs> Corkscrews and cars falling from the sky. Well, yeah, if you don't hit the speed. Right. It's all about the, the, the speed that you got to hit. And so, yeah, that's a whole other danger factor. That's awesome. It ain't even about the crash. Is your, is your car going to fall out it of the sky? It will fall out of the sky. Right. See, this is why I don't watch NASCAR because I grew up on Speed Racer. And I those remember were, you remember Speed Racer? Here he and comes. Here comes, comes Speed Racer. Racer. He's, he's a, a demon, demon on wheels. wheels. <laughs> he's going down the travel like he's ever ever going to come back. Okay. This is uh, real, right? I haven't dreamt this that you two are similar <laughs> to each other. <laughs> the power and, of pop culture on childhood. On childhood, it's childhood pop culture. Right. Wait a minute. Are, are you a fan of NASCAR? Have you I, ever I, have you ever followed NASCAR? I, I've attended. I, I visited. I, I, I've been at one NASCAR race in my life. Oh yeah, um, right. I, I I never understood why there was so much more interest in NASCAR relative to Formula One, uh, mm. at least in the United States. I just didn't understand that. Did they have better marketing? Because you know the Formula One cars are pretty cool looking. Oh right? my God! Right? You they're know? like rockets they're, with <laughs> wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah, the yeah. fact that they're so low to they're, the ground. They're like, they're, they're like, like yeah, they're yeah, this yeah. far off the ground. Right, right. So I never understood mm. the difference in appeal. Right. Um, but uh, I'd like. High performance people, I like high performance machines, mm -hmm. just as a general thing. I'll so. tell you why Formula One is not as um, popular here in America as NASCAR. Because Formula One racers speak like this. <laughs> and NASCAR drivers talk like this, damn it! That's America! 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 Okay. As the only, <laughs> as the token European, I feel I should stand up, but I just think I'm going to get no, knocked not, back down no, again. No, it's nothing against you. We're no, I know it's not against me, yeah, but no, anyway, no, it's, it's, it's interesting. One's, a, one's an oval, and you couldn't put a NASCAR race in Monte Carlo, but you, could, you can right. with a Formula One, which is so, so special. Anyway, Absolutely. next tweet. Let's go there. All right. Spoilers increase the effective weight traction over a car's rear, rear wheels at high speed without increasing the car's mass. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Have you noticed, either in cars you've driven mm -hmm. or observing a police car, that if you have a heavy trunk, you actually, your car is more stable on the road. Have you ever, I don't know if you've ever noticed this. I transport a lot of bodies in my trunk. Okay, so that you should know. So I'm yeah, very so, well aware. So you would know. And, <laughs> no. uh, Back in the day when you had rear wheel traction, if you have higher weight over those wheels, then in occasions where you might have spun out, right. you don't. You don't. Right. And any time your car is spinning, then you don't have full traction with the ground and you're not in complete control of your car. It's like you, sledding. I, I, don't, I'm, I don't sled. Well, drifting. So. You don't as, as sled? A, Here's the deal. In sledding, you need a fat kid on your sled team. Oh. <laughs> if you don't have a fat kid on your sled team, <laughs> Forget it. You don't. You're just. It gives you more traction. Right. You need. That's just, that's just what you were saying. I did you didn't not get know. that email about political correctness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't know this about. Okay. Okay. So go ahead. Yeah. So so the right. point is, if you're spinning, increase the weight, and then the contact with the ground becomes the integrity gets re re restored, mm -hmm. and your traction. Is the trouble is, with putting, with putting a whole load of bricks in the back of your NASCAR, what? you're going to lose everything because it's weight. Exactly. Right. So your weight is whatever a scale will show. Okay. Right. So Let's yes, talk about you, that. You, <laughs> so I've been eating donuts lately. I'm just saying, Mexican, a lot of Mexican. Let's so, not talk so about you can, the scales. So you can you can put bricks in the trunk of every NASCAR to increase that traction. Right. Yeah. You could do that, but then the engine. Now has the motor has to accelerate more weight, 
So it's and it's Newton's it's second law of motion, the force equals the mass times acceleration. If the mass goes up, then you're getting a lower acceleration right. for, from the force. You're not going to go as fast, okay? Yeah. Or, or you're not going to be as nimble. So, is there any way to increase the weight on the back wheels or the weight of the car without increasing the mass of the car? Yes, and there, there is. is. Yeah. And that's what the spoiler does. That's what the spoiler so does. So as you're driving, <laughs> air comes across the spoiler, presses down, increases the weight of the car without increasing the mass of the car. And this greatly improves your traction, especially at high speed. It's making that airflow over the rear wheels push that weight down. Therefore, you don't increase the mass of the vehicle, but you are increasing the downforce. Is that right? Right. So there are other factors in the shape of the vessel regarding the the um, the aerodynamics. Yeah. What you don't want is to have turbulence in the back of your car, which then creates a drag, a right. kind of suction. Absolutely. It's kind of a backwards yeah. drag on your car. This is why this is why drafting works. Okay. Yes. So you have a car that would have turbulence in the back. You come up behind it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it works in two ways. One, the car that's leading moves faster because it doesn't have the drag behind it. So people say, stop the, uh, drafting off of me, I'm to towing you. You're not actually towing the car. Right. No, 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 you want the person there. Right. Now, so there you actually want to be the second car rather than the first car, but if you are the first car, you, it's better to have someone drafting than not. That's all I'm saying. Because you're, uh, that, that drafter is eliminating their drag. It's, you, the drafter the, is the eliminating drafter, the lead the car's, car's drag. Draft. Correct. Yeah. So, so now the air comes back, and they have someone else drafting that, and someone mm -hmm. else drafting that. And now, now you you are sucked in behind it. So this this affects fuel efficiency too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, yeah. I did this experiment once. So you know when, when I first got a car that tracked what your instantaneous yeah, uh, yeah, your fuel consumption your fuel consumption yeah. you know miles per gallon. Right. And you notice if you take your foot off the pedal, the miles per gallon goes up because you're moving, but you're not. You're not sucking gas. You're not sucking <laughs> gas. Okay. So I'm just, you know, doing my own physics experiments on the road. Uh, it's my, my, my first outing in a car that did this. Okay. Right? You know, you might have a problem. No. <laughs> so watch. So watch. So I do this and I say, so I wonder what will happen if I get behind this truck. So I'm driving and I'm getting like 25 miles a gallon. And then I slide in behind the truck. And my foot is still on the accelerator. Okay. And whoa, it was like 80 miles a gallon. I was behind the truck. Because you're drafting the truck. I'm drafting the truck, and it was like, whoa! And Neil drove all the way to Florida, and he was only going to the store for some bread. <laughs> <I know. laughs> bread.